Welcome back to another edition of Focus One. Today we're going to talk to Joe Gruders, chairman of the Sarasota County Republican Party. It's the summer before the election and the race for the White House is heating up. How do things look at the moment? How surprising was the Supreme Court decision to uphold the Affordable Health Care Act and what impact will that have on the race? Who will win in Florida? And what are the most interesting races and issues in the local area? Welcome to the show, Joe. Thanks so much for having me on. All right, we're, we're um, at the, the Friday of uh, Fourth of July week. How do you think your guy's doing? I think the, the, the Governor Romney's doing great. You know, he's raised, uh, it was just reported, I think, in the, the, uh, the, the news this week that million. he raised $100 million. And of course, you know, our biggest obstacle that we faced both four years ago when John McCain was running in this election is, is how do we overcome the, the financial advantage that, uh, that President Barack Obama has. Mm -hmm. You know, he spent a billion dollars in his race to get elected against John McCain. And every time you turned on the TV, there were six or seven Obama ads versus one McCain ad. And as we all know in politics, uh, at the end of the day, you have to have the resources to get out your message and also to counteract whatever your opposition is doing. And so a hundred million in one month is a big win for Romney. I think that the momentum he's building as a result of some of these other issues that are going on, like the Supreme Court decision and some of these other uh, issues that, that are really evolving around the states across mm -hmm. this country, especially in some of these swing states. Uh, I think that the Governor Romney is going to be uh, very competitive. You like in where he is at, at the, yes, the moment. The other, th I think um, the jobs report just came out within the past hour or so, and unless uh, there was a head fake, I think it's another uh, relatively poor one. I think uh, unemployment rate has held steady. So. Uh, it looks unlikely have, that the president uh, will be at a position during the election where the unemployment rate will be anywhere near uh, where it needs to be, or not where it needs to be, um, where anybody that has been reelected, where incumbent has been reelected um, in that territory. So what I'm trying to say is if the president ends up winning, it, he'll be charting new, uh, a new course in terms of charting into new territory with respect to the unemployment rate. So just, I mean, does that make you happy? Or Well, you know? th there's no question that the president's policies of more regulation, higher taxes, more social welfare type uh, uh, programs and entitlements, it's not the answer. They're not good for business. They're not getting people back to work. And by hiring more uh, public sector positions at the expense of the private sector, the, the, the wage earners and the, the wage payers, it doesn't work. And as a result, I think people, I think, I think people want to get back to work. And I think here in Florida, we've been somewhat insulated because we've had a governor whose main focus has been to get people back to work and has come up with new job creating type policies to where we've actually done fairly well. I think unemployment's continued to drop month after month since our governor's been elected. And so it, 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 it's not bad news all across the country, but certainly the president's policies are a failure. And I think as a result, he's going to pay the price in November. Uh, just with respect to the, those unemployment rates, so just uh, when you see them, when you see a bad jobs report, do you smirk? I mean, does it, you know? Absolutely not. I want unemployment to go down. Nobody likes to see anybody struggle. You know, I have a lot of friends and family members members that are just like everybody else. I mean, here I am, I, I'm, I'm a CPA, but you know, it, it, what we experience in our firm is the same thing that everybody is experiencing. You know, it's not all uh, happy times. You know, we've had to go through uh, 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 some downsizing ourselves just from the standpoint of you have to survive, you have to adjust uh, with the economy and everybody wants the economy to go up because at the end of the day, everybody wins. It's not just, the, the, it's not a matter of politics. It's a matter of putting the country back on track so that our brightest days are in the future. Um, a couple of other just uh, uh, just factoids or observations about the, the the state of the race. If I again how, uh, how to use a, uh, an analogy, I'm, I'm fond of the uh, uh, irresistible force meets the immovable object. In this race, I might you know it's a weak force running into an unstable object, and we're going to see who you know who ends up in the White House. But uh, the president still, I think, um, maintains a, a slight lead in most polls. Rasmussen has uh, Romney up a little bit, but the, the other six or seven have the president up by you know three or four points. He looks a little bit better in the, the critical uh, swing states, and so. You know, as a political analyst, I look at that and I just have mixed sentiments. I think with respect to the funding race, as you point out, Romney may end up having more than uh, the administration um, when we get to uh, the election. And you look at the state of the economy um, and you, you kind of have to like 
you know, what it looks like in terms of politics for, uh, for Romney. But at the same time, uh, he's still a little behind in some of the, the, the critical states. And so... Well, in, in the difference, what you have is Governor Romney is a proven job creator. He has spent his career putting people back to work. You know, he, he turned around the Olympics. He's turned around... You know, dozens Massachusetts? Of, is he going to run on his? <laughs> is he going to win on Massachusetts record? He may not win on Massachusetts, but <laughs> that's a very tough state to govern in. You know, I'm surprised he didn't pick a state like Utah to govern in. But overall, you know, what he's done is he's put all these people back to work. He's turned around all these different companies, and he has a record of being a job creator. Where if you look at President Obama, obviously, I don't think he understands the the complete economic picture. And, uh, and if you look at his background as a community organizer, then as a state senator, then U.S. senator, then as our president, he's never had to sign paychecks. He's never had to uh, go out there in the workforce and compete and understand what competition is and, and how, it's a g how it's good for the economy, how it's good for the private sector. And as a result, when you have somebody that, that doesn't truly understand, and it's my opinion, he does not, based on his policies that he's trying to implement, uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's ripe for change. And that's why I think, think Governor Romney is going to win. The Romney message will prevail. Let's talk a little bit about uh, last week's uh, Supreme Court uh, decision. It caught some folks. Uh, a little off guard. I have to admit that I was uh, one of them. I, was, I didn't quite see that dynamic uh, uh, coming. I really did not think that Kennedy was going to vote to uphold, and he didn't. Uh, I thought that had Kennedy voted to uphold, Roberts might come over if he had a little bit of cover. Um, but I just, I mean, he held his cards close to the vest. That's what the Supreme Court justices are supposed to do, chief justices are supposed to do. Um, but I didn't quite see that one coming. If, if I could pull uh, Justice Roberts in and, and have him sit down right now, what would you like to say to him or how would you react? Shame on you. No, <laughs> <laughs> really, it's, it, 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 I was one of those guys who was in complete shock. I couldn't believe it. I almost still can't believe it. Uh, but it does. Two what, what shocked you the most? It, it, it shocked me that it was upheld. The, the, uh, the vote or the, the what about the, his justification for the vote? Which again, very for folks that don't know, most of uh, uh, the debate was over uh, the uh, the commerce clause in the Constitution and whether that uh, would allow or that would legitimize the government's a actions with respect to treating uh, the the penalty or the fee uh, if you fail to get the individual mandate as the equivalent of a, of a tax. Logically, that's in a way how I viewed it right from the start, but the administration chose not to make that, that argument, that it well, wasn't a tax. Well, they're still saying it's a penalty. The problem is the Obama administration still says after the Supreme Court, they made the decision based on John Roberts. You know, the, the, he said this is going to be passed because it's a tax. Right. And so, yes, that makes sense. You know, it, it, his justification, okay, and I understand. And the vote was correct on his part. It, you're right. And then the very next day, the Obama policy is, oh, it's not a tax. This Obama oh, it's sure. not a tax. Well, it's a penalty. Yes. Well, the problem is it's it's not a penalty. It's a tax. And it's a tax that's going to be placed on the backs of the taxpayers, especially the middle class. And when President Obama, before he got elected, he said that he was not going to raise taxes on anybody that made under 200000 And they say the majority of the taxes are going to be paid in, in, in this country based on that tax is going to be based on pe on people who make under 200,000. This is a the largest tax increase in the history of our country and it, it, it's a tax increase that when the economy is struggling that people can't afford. There's a reason why people don't have uh, health insurance. Like my father, he's a small business owner. So he chooses. See, this is political ammunition he's provided. Maybe he did you a favor in terms yeah, yeah. of Well, what he did. Well, th there you there you go. If we can't mobilize our base based on that one decision, because what I'm hearing from out of, coming out of D.C. is that if we win the presidency, and if we win 50, if we have 51 U.S. senators and retain the control of the House, we will be able to repeal Obamacare. And if we can't motivate our base and get people off the couch and into our headquarters, making phone calls, walking the doors, getting out the vote on behalf of Governor Romney mm -hmm. and our U.S. Senate nominee and the rest of the Republican candidates, then we shouldn't be uh, 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 we shouldn't be able to, uh, 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 if we can't ha let help our guys achieve victory in November, yeah, then I, I Obamacare under, should with. I, I understand. And again, I do think that there, um, that's some of the silver lining in terms of uh, for conservatives or the Republican Party within that decision, because it is, with respect to the tax issue, um, a fairly political 
potent opportunity. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm puzzled by why the conservatives are all angry at uh, Justice Roberts for his decision. Because it looked like logically, it's you know, or you know, in terms of jurisprudence, it's a, it's a it's a it's a good call. It's an accurate call. Um, and if you were to challenge it, you'd have to say that it wasn't a tax. But then politically, you can't say that. So. It was, it, well, you know, based, it was a tax based and, on the tax argument, you know, yeah. it, it, it appears that he made the right decision. But basically, this entire policy goes against the liberties that we all enjoy as Americans. And, you know, forcing us to, to, to purchase uh, insurance and to tax us for mm -hmm. it, uh, to me, it's, it's, it's the wrong policy to take. And it's, it's these socialist-type policies that are pushing us right to the edge of the cliff as a country. And, and, and if people want the European style of government and want more socialist policies where they end up paying 50-plus percent of their income in taxes, uh, they should move to Europe, certainly not here in America. We're successful as a country because of free enterprise, because you have the ability to go from nothing to one of the richest guys in, in the country based on hard work and good ideas, uh, and that's what drives the American dream. Uh, to this point, it's only been a week, but to this point, um, you, are you pleased with Governor Romney's reaction to the decision? Uh, or not? Um, if not, what would you like him to say, or what message would you like him to get? And again, you know, well, in, in fairness to the, the governor, you know, he, he's somewhat constrained by um, you're, you're exactly right. Massachusetts it, and it, what he did and what he said earlier in his it, career. And what's interesting is you saw the, the Romney team initially come out and also say this is a penalty. So they were repeating what Obama exactly. said. I right. mean, and so because they don't want to be faced with the fact that. This is. You could actually after put a list of quotes. I've, I've, that looks kind of funny because you can't tell whether the quote's coming from Obama now or Obama, you yeah. know, ten years ago. Romney now or Romney ten years ago. You can <laughs> mix and match all of these things. You're right. Well, the good news is, is yesterday Romney came out and called it a tax. And, that, and you know, if he's going to win in November, he's going to have to continue to pound that message, saying this is the largest tax increase that we've ever faced here in America. And if you if you want to continue down this road and want to have more tax increase in fewer jobs, you know, vote for the status quo. If you think we need change, and, and mm -hmm. if you want hope in this country, and if you want to get people back to work and off the welfare rolls, then vote for Governor Romney. Um, with respect to uh, the governor's, again, Massachusetts uh, health care uh, plan, do you think that he should continue to try uh, to, to point out some of the nuances and so that he has his cake and eat it too. I did what I did and it made sense and yet there's a little bit of a difference in what the administration is trying to do at the federal level. So I was right then and I'm right now. Or do you think he should just uh, again, I think, I repudiate think what happened in Massachusetts and go all in I for think, you know, I think seeing he, the light or so? Or what, he needs to say that it's a tax and he needs to con continue to, to, to pound on what, what the uh, Chief, uh, Robert, Chief Justice Robert said that it was a tax. And uh, Romney's path to victory is, I think, through that issue. And, and, and you're right. It's very muddied because of uh, the Massachusetts plan and what Romney does. And you're right. You could take these quotes, and they sound somewhat the same. But the, Romney's path to victory is through the fact that Obama placed the, the largest tax increase in the history of America on us at a time when we at least can afford to do so. Um, one more question on the, the health care uh, decision before we move on to the, the veep stakes. Okay. Um, but, um, some of the pundits have said, uh, trying to assess uh, Justice Robert, Chief Justice Roberts' logic was that he was trying to preserve the integrity of the court. And it, it is somewhat unusual that he found an argument to uphold the law. It was an argument that the administration was not making. Again, again, the, the, in terms of both the constitutional implications and the political implications, there's lots of silver lining in there uh, you know, for conservatives. But do you think that that was a factor in uh, you know, Chief Justice Roberts' decision? And if so, what does that say about, I mean, if, he, if he's worried about uh, the court being viewed as uh, overly political? If the decision was made based on that, then it is too political already. Mm -hmm. And, 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 we, and, and it, it's, it's unfortunate and it shouldn't happen. So my, my thinking is he did not make a decision based on that because I, because I think he is above. I think the Supreme Court is above the political uh, 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 infighting that we see in, in the mm -hmm. different houses. But so uh, I, I would say I hope for a country's sake it wasn't a political decision and he did what he thought was right, which is what we want all Supreme Court justices to do, no matter which side you're on. Let's go to the Veep Stakes. 
uh, maybe you could rattle off, uh, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I will. Um, not who you want, we, uh, we can come back to that if you, if you want to divulge it, but in terms of uh, likelihood of who would uh, be named as the, uh, the vice president, if you had a list of top three, maybe in, you know, uh, declining order, so third most likely, second most likely, or you know most likely. Well, well, they say that uh, uh, Rob Portman is the number one most likely person. To That's what I've been, be been saying that for a while. Um, and a former budget director for uh, President Bush, obviously mm -hmm. a solid guy, uh, 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 would do a very good job. I don't know how much excitement, how much excitement he would bring to the base, but I don't know that if you need excitement. Uh, I don't know if you need that much excitement to add to the ticket right, right now. One uh, of the things that I, I try to comment or, or, or point out is I think that uh, with respect to the, this, these decisions that get made by a presidential candidate, you need to be thinking in terms of both sort of uh, the electoral implications, but also the governing imp implications. And if you get too tied up in simply the electoral, you, you know, and I don't think that they do. I think that they actually do think about um, a governing partner, and that's why I, th I don't think he uh, Romney gets hurt too much by uh, Portman on the electoral side. I do think it's it's a benefit for him, but I think on the governing side that might be. The and most, then you have, you know. I mean, you have people like Senators Marco Rubio, who of course is is it, to, in my eyes is certainly pushing for it. You have former Governor Jeb Bush. Obviously, Florida is mm -hmm. a must carry state for the for Governor Romney. Uh, uh, but I want to put him past, you know, to, 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 to reach out and pick somebody that nobody's thinking of. Uh, you know, whose name you don't hear a lot, uh, and I know plenty is also being mentioned. Uh, but what happened to somebody like Congressman Michelle Bachman? You know, she actually did a good job. She can mobilize the base. She speaks well. I think she did a good job uh, while she was running for president. Palin Redux. Uh, uh, you really uh, want to go there again? Uh, 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 I, 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 well, I think that she could do, she could accomplish various things uh, 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 for the governor. And I'm not saying I'm supporting her or right, I want no, her to get it. I'm just saying I think that's a name that you don't hear of who is actually no, would, might good. be a, a good candidate. Another person would be... You'll get a uh, call from me like five uh, minutes later if that turns out to be yeah. true. That's quite, that'd be quite uh, you, you know who else I, I would personally like? I like guys like Jim DeMent, the senator from mm -hmm. South Carolina. I think he's a, a statesman. Uh, he's uh, uh, known to be... Uh, uh, a pretty good conservative, uh, you know, one of the Tea Party type uh, leaders uh, in the United States Senate, but he's still mainstream. He was uh, elected as a mainstream guy. He's still a mainstream guy, good party guy. But again, I think he would be able to rally the base. And one thing that we need, one thing that helped us with the Supreme Court de decision on the Obamacare is it's helped us intensify and mobilize the base. And what Palin did four years ago is it it, it, it really intensified the base to where there was a firestorm of excitement and it got people uh, motivated to go do work mm -hmm. on behalf of our get out the vote efforts. And I think that if you have somebody like a Bachman or a, uh, a, a Dement type, I think it will help you, or even Marco Certainly Rubio, been, yeah. it will help you continue to intensify the, uh, uh, or, or build the intensity among our supporters. Let, let's talk a little bit more about um uh, Senator Rubio and over what's happened over the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, start off with uh, the immigration uh, issue. We we know that Senator Rubio was working on his own version of uh, a Dream Act. Um, the administration, Democrats more generally, came close to passing something, got it through uh, the House, um, but it couldn't uh, get it through the Senate. Through his executive uh, powers, the president, again, surprisingly, and we didn't get a lot of forewarning, announced a, a, a policy uh, that might have been pretty close to what Rubio was working on in terms of having sort of a status of uh, uh, immigrant or undocumented workers uh, that were in school, not a path to citizenship, but a sort of a temporary reprieve, went over uh, fairly well uh, for the administration with his own party um, and I think with the, the Hispanic community. The reaction on the part of uh, Romney and Rubio was a little, you know, I, I think they got their lunch stolen on, on that one. Maybe just well, comment I think, on it. I think yeah. what the president did is he's over stepping his boundary and his executive powers by saying that it doesn't matter what laws were passed by what bodies of Congress before me that were signed in law by different presidents. I'm going to go ahead and do whatever I want at any time and just for my own path. I'll give him credit. He passed Obamacare and you got to give him credit. Uh, uh, it cost him a lot politically it, through both houses. 
and now it's been upheld. So his main piece of legislation. So I do give the president credit for accomplishing one of his main tasks. But, the, it, but that was the right way to do it. The wrong way to do it is to ignore the laws that are on the books and say, well, we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to, not uh, prosecute, you know, these uh, you know illegal immigrants, or we're not going to do this. Where our new policy is going to be this arbitrarily outside. He, the president's job is not to create the laws. Let me come back on that one just a, a, a little bit. I think that uh, a little bit of a pushback. I don't think he's going to get too hurt politically, and, and here's why. I understand the point uh, uh, that uh, this matter is something that should be resolved by our, our Congress. We've had things that are on the table, and the president shouldn't use his own discretion to come up with But we all agree that we don't like the status quo and want to do something about it. Um, there's been gridlock, deadlock with respect to nothing has been able to get through Congress. So the president comes out and says, "He well, here's a temporary, here's what I'm going to do for a temporary period. And then when there's a little bit of, of an uproar and put on the spot, well, if you don't like it, what would you do differently? And if you don't have an answer to that question as a presidential candidate, you know, or if, if Ruby has muffled for one reason or another because he doesn't want to get out in front, that wasn't the greatest moment, I think, for, uh, you know, the, the Romney campaign not having an answer. I think uh, perhaps saying, I, you know, you need to go through Congress and this is what it needs to look like, yeah. but you need to go through Congress, but I, I, don't, I can't tell you what it's supposed to look like. That, I, I think, uh, hurt them a little bit politically. I agree, but I think we could still make some ground, you, you know, and that's, immigration is one of those topics where they say, in the general election, don't talk about it. It's right. a loser for Republicans. I'm, I'm opposite. I think that most people believe that we should fix the problems that exist. You know, and people say, well, secure the border. Well, we need to take it one step further. I'm, you know, my belief is have a national E-Verify type system, number mm -hmm. one. And number two, uh, it, it, it cut the benefits out for it, not only illegal immigrants, but really for, you know, let's come up with the some type of entitlement type process where we start cutting back these various entitlements like food stamps is at an all time high, I think 40, over 45 million disability, we're at all time high in terms of number of people that are on disability. We need to continue to try to work on these programs and it shouldn't be lifelong, obviously if you're disabled and you're truly disabled, mm -hmm there should be a system in place to help. But food stamps, other type of social services shouldn't be around for you know generation after generation and year after year. And I think once you modify those type of programs and get them to where they're a, a helping step up rather than a, rather than acting as an enabler mm -hmm. for people, I think that the immigration will take care of itself. But it's a, the national e-verify system will go a long way. Let's uh, bring the lens into Florida here. Uh, two quick questions, probably don't take a long time to answer, but who's going to win in terms of uh, the state and the presidential race? And then uh, how do you like uh, Mac's chances of finally knocking off uh, Senator Nelson in the state? That, that, that's a dead heat, and but maybe the president has a slight lead right now in Florida. I'm pretty confident that Governor Romney will win Florida. Uh, that's not going to say that that will carry him to victory in November uh, uh, throughout the, our entire country, it's I think hard it's hard to get to the White it's House. It's going to be without, close. Yeah, without, well, Republican really. Democrats. Uh, president We've got a few. Uh, president Democrats Obama a few can win. De De president Obama can win with losing Florida. Romney has to win Florida, and I saw the ads that were being spent right. in yeah. various markets, and you see that uh, Romney's outspending Obama right now in one state, Florida, the Orlando, Tampa. Uh, Orlando and TV media markets and uh, uh, in Jacksonville. So you have three media markets, and that's they're the only three major metropolitan areas where Romney's outspending Obama, which is kind of interesting. But it shows you the significance of Florida for the Republicans. And Max, Matt, the Congressman Mack is a good candidate. He's a, he's, a, he's a good conservative from here from Southwest Florida. Uh, his chances, I think, rest solely on. Romney's ability to win Florida. If Romney wins Florida, my guess is uh, you could write this down at home. Uh, Mac will get two points below where Romney is. So if if, if, if Romney ends up at 52 percent, then Mac will end up in a statistical dead heat tie with uh, uh, Senator Nelson. So I will my, write that down. My guess is two, Mac that. two points behind Romney. Two points he behind uh, Romney. We, we're uh, getting close to the end on time. I want to come down and talk about a, a local issue that's been in the, in the papers, and you wrote an editorial for that, and that was 
the uh, county supervisor's race here in, in uh, Sarasota County. Uh, we had what looked to be an uncontested Republican primary uh, between, again, a, a fairly um, a powerful incumbent, or again, I think, uh, and then uh, a, a potential challenger that has uh, some very good name recognition as well. Uh, and uh, there was, it was, didn't try to be coy about it, but uh, the Republicans put another person to file, you know, in order to keep the, the primary closed. Um, and then there was a little bit of backlash, certainly from the Democratic Party, but some others saying uh, that that was, un, you know, uncool. Explain your position on that. Well, my position is, as as a political party and as chairman of the Republican Party, it's 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 my belief and my feeling that uh, that in primaries, you know, what does a party stand for? Well, it, it's it's people that come together collectively that have basically shared ideas, beliefs, goal, you know, principles. Uh, that we share and so we all mark that we're Republicans and so as a result we have a primary process where we vote for our candidates Democrats can vote for whoever they want in their primary and then we meet in the general and yes that uh, we've uh, 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 I think back in 2000 they passed a law that said that if there's only one party running uh, there should be an open system so Democrats independents should be able to vote Right in the in the race, but in reality, what it is is it's a failure of the Democratic Party to field a candidate. You got to think, 2008, just a couple years ago, when Obama was last on the ticket in Sarasota County, he only lost to John McCain by 211 mm -hmm. votes. There were some Democrats that were in Sarasota County that won Sarasota County. So for them not to field candidates, it's it, it's it's it, it's it, it really they're doing they're doing a disservice to the community, and instead of trying to, to to, to do better as a party and to get candidates out there and running and supporting them. They just want to attack Republicans for us saying, listen, this is our party's primary. We're going to vote for our nominee and then we're going to send that nominee to the general. It's, 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 it's really their fault. One follow-up follow question to that. I understand the point and I do have uh, some sympathies for the idea that um, Republicans should be able to determine who's going to represent the Republican Party uh, within a race. But again, we come back to the, the point that if in fact no viable candidates are being fielded by the Democratic Party or another party, then the primary does become the de facto election. And while the blame might be put on the shoulders of Democrats for not fielding the candidates, the, it's the electorate that essentially loses an opportunity to participate uh, in the election. So again, I think Maybe it's the Democrats' fault, but why would you want to take it out on the general public and you're say right. you and know, they you're, you're not invited into what really is essentially uh, well, I'll know, say the this. de facto election? Both here. of these candidates are good Republicans. Uh, no matter who wins, they're going to represent Sarasota County well. And for everybody that's out there, they could still go change their registration and vote in the Republican primary. So there's nothing that prevents people from being a Republican. So I encourage everybody, we'd like to increase our uh, numbers, so uh, go ahead and change and you'll be Able to vote in all the races. Uh, Joe, I think we're out of time. That was a lot of fun. Any final thoughts you have as we work our way into election season here? Well, get excited. Um, we're going to come out with an announcement in a couple of days. We're going to have a statesman uh, uh, dinner in late August. And uh, with the convention here in Tampa, this is really an, an, an opportunity for everybody, mainly Republicans, but really for everybody to be at this, the eye of the hurricane. Because we're going to have so many different political figures in and around Southwest Florida in the Tampa area, Manatee, Sarasota. That's everybody's, it, it's going to give everybody the chance. Whoever's interested in politics should go out. And anytime there's a free type rally, whether it be President Obama or Governor Romney or anybody, any of their surrogates, Everybody should go out to see them because you should see these candidates, see their uh, uh, representatives in person, go shake their hands, meet them, and be educated. And, and my advice for everybody is educate yourselves on the issues so you make the right decision in November. And when you educate yourself, I know it's going to be on the Republican side, and I hope to have everybody's vote uh, uh, for the Republican uh, candidates in November. Let's close on that, Joe. It's wonderful to have you on the show. Um, I'd like to thank our audience for uh, tuning in. We'll see you again next week on another edition of Focus One.